Hey everyone and welcome to Bassman Studio. I'm Charles Bassman. In this video uh, we will be doing a landscape of Egypt, in this case the famous pyramids at Giza and the Sphinx. So it should be a lot of fun and uh, we will pretend that we are traveling to Egypt. Um, I've actually never been and I've never actually done a landscape of the pyramids so it should be interesting for me as well. The medium I'll be using is oils on canvas, but you could choose to use any medium you wish, such as watercolor or acrylic, and follow along. So thank you for joining me, and sit back and relax, and I hope you enjoy this new video from Bassman Studio. So as you can see from the reference um, just shown, I'm going to add just the large areas of shadow. And as usual, I start with a uh, burnt sienna underdrawing and just laying in the very, very uh, broad shadows to show where light's coming from. In this case, it's coming from the upper right hand side of the picture. So the shadows are going to be on the left hand side of the picture. And I'm using a large brush to lay in. Um, the large areas of shadow with burnt sienna. And also I just laid in my composition so I know where exactly I want to place everything, the pyramids, the sphinx, and the ground. So I'm just going around, not focusing on one area, but moving around the painting. And I'm not adding any real detail, I'm just forming uh, the painting and adding volume and a sense of um, three-dimensionality in the painting, uh, even at this early stage. So remember, you don't want to add detail yet. Avoid detail as much as possible till the very end. And you just want to lay in your large areas of shadow. And go all around. You just don't want to focus on one small area. You want to move around the painting. And at this stage, it should start to show volume and shape. And there, and you, and you can see I'm using it very thinly. So over this will go our color. And this dries very quickly, burnt sienna. You could also use raw umber if you wish. Also a very good fast drying color. And just laying in the basic forms. But avoiding detail. and doing some final touches for the shadows. And now I'm starting to lay in my background, starting with the sky. And you can see I mixed a very light blue for the sky. And I'm just going around, still keeping it very simple, but just going around to lay in just the basic shape of the sky. And also using the sky to of correct any um, drawing that may be corrected in the foreground and the middle ground. So I could use that to kind of shape, let's say, the Sphinx. But again, I want to keep it very simple and broad and just move around and still using a very big brush. So this is a combination of um, cobalt blue and a little bit of yellow and white. So just going around the entire painting, you can see, and covering as much area as I can. And just adding a bit of dark as the sky is, has these gradations. And you can see I'm starting to form it and trying to cover as much area as I can even at this early stage. Again, this is what we call blocking in. Blocking in meaning that you're going around and you're putting in all the color where it needs to be. And this is where you could be pretty much loose and free and 
expressive. No detail yet, of course. And you can see from the reference now, there's some beautiful golden colors. And I'm, on my palette, I'm just gonna mix a beautiful golden color for the pyramids and the Sphinx using cadmium yellow, some cadmium red and some white. <clears throat> and using a little bit more red just to keep it kind of a gold color. Just taking a little bit of blue to tone it down a little bit. It's all about the amount of paint you use. Not just the color, but how much of the color you use to get the right value. And you can see it's starting to turn kind of a golden color. And now I'm just going to really broadly just paint in the large areas again, starting with the pyramid on uh, the right hand side. And still using, I haven't switched brushes, so this is still like the same large brush where I lay in like just a basic large color and going all around. Again, avoiding any detail. And now I could paint the Sphinx. Again, or avoiding any detail. Sometimes uh, when I do lay in the color, I do um, go over a previous drawing and that's okay. It's okay if that happens. And you just wanna go all around and put in the basic large shapes. And you can see it's a beautiful, almost like Naples yellow color. The pyramid in the left-hand side in the back is a bit more red, so I added a bit more cadmium red to that, almost like a brick-like red. And these variations happen in nature. You have to be aware of them. And even the background, which is a pretty much a gold Naples yellowish color, does vary because of the sun and because of the way light is hitting objects. And now I'm working on the middle ground. And again, keeping it very broad and very large. Now I can start adding my shadows. Not the deepest shadows, of course, this is what we call the middle tone. So these are pretty much the, um, not the darkest dark. But you can see it's starting to have volume and form and starting to turn. But still retaining its very warm tone mostly because of the underpainting, which is a burnt sienna. But you can see at this, even at this early stage, it's starting to have some sort of three-dimensional quality. This is what you want. You don't want it to work at the very end. It should be working from the very beginning, from the underdrawing. You don't want to say at the very end, I'm going to make everything work and have form. It should start working from the very beginning. And now I'm just adding just a variation of shadow. As I said, in nature, uh, color is going to change and vary depending on how light is hitting it and also the material. So the pyramid on the left hand side is slightly a different color than, let's say, the pyramid on the right hand side, which is closer to us. So now I'm working on the middle ground, which is a bit more, more of a warmer color than the pyramid on the left-hand side. As it's closer to us, when things get closer in nature, they become warmer, they become more yellow. Things further away become more blue, more hazy. So this pyramid on the right-hand side is a bit lighter in tone even in the shadow, 
than the pyramid on uh, the left hand side. So these are things that you learn from uh, painting for a while. You get to train your eye to see a certain way. And I'm just adding a bit more of the shadow and you can see it's starting to have volume, it's starting to have form. But I've of course added no detail yet. Still blocking in. And now I can start pretty much um, blending in a little bit, a bit of the shadows on the face of the Sphinx. And I'm putting very little pressure on the brush just to very, be very, use it very softly so I could blend. And this takes a little bit of practice and you have to pretty much control the way you use the brush. but still forming the head and still avoiding detail. I haven't switched brushes yet. So I'm still using the very large brush. With practice, you start to find out which brushes work for you, but it's always good to start with a very large brush. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the shadow and you can see from the reference, we have a lot more shadow to go. So now I'm going to add some more blue to the sky. Again, you want to go back and forth. Don't just uh, focus on one area, but look around your painting. If you need to work on the background, then work on the background. It is very essential that the background help the foreground. Everything should work in harmony. So I noticed that the background is a little bit more blue, a deeper blue. So I'm adding just a deeper blue in the sky. And I have switch brushes. So this is a slightly smaller brush than the previous. So as you work uh, closer to your finish, the brushes should get smaller. As you're working with finer detail and you're trying to control um, the line in your painting and be a little bit more, um, try to clean up areas as I'm doing right now. And you can see I'm using also the background to help with the drawing of the pyramids and the Sphinx. So if I need to fix the drawing, I can do that now. As you can see, I'm going around the Sphinx, just fixing any errors and helping with the form, but at the same time, toning down the uh, sky and going all around, even on the pyramid, um, the right hand side, making it a more of a solid structure. And you can see this, I keep uh, toning down the blue, making it a deeper blue for the sky, which in itself helps the pyramids stand out more as uh, you have a cool and a warm color opposing each other in the picture. So this is actually helping the pyramids and the Sphinx stand out more from the background as you have the opposition of cool and warm colors. And now I'm working on the pyramids. As I did the sky, I am um, cleaning up areas and putting in a lighter tone. It may seem like I'm not doing much, but I'm actually making this a little bit more of a softer tone using a bit of white. And just again, going around the painting. and adding a little bit more red to paint in forms and value. And I'm looking at any area that I haven't painted yet. So anything I've left bare canvas, I am looking to cover at this point. So that the sketching stage is almost done and now comes the finishing stage where I start blending and adding anything I need to add while covering up any um, raw canvas that I see. Still using the same golden yellow color that I mixed previously. So 
Now I'm going to go back and add some of the shadows and now I'm getting more, a bit more like vibrant in color and using a bit more paint. So now it's going to be a little bit more vibrant as I add um, shadow to the structure, let's say, of the Sphinx, where you could see pretty much like a yellow reflected color on the side of the Sphinx. So this is going to give it a bit more life and power. And give it more of a three-dimensional quality. And again, using it to cover up part of, parts of the canvas that I have not painted in yet. And going everywhere. The background. Any place that I feel like I have not painted yet is being painted. And also the background as well. So now I'm touching up the background a little bit and cleaning up any drawing errors or any error that I see or any place that I see needs to be cleaned up and sharpened in a way. So I could use this beautiful blue to sharpen the pyramids or sharpen any lines that need to be sharpened. And I could do the same thing on the left-hand side of the painting with the pyramid on the left. I could start sharpening lines. It takes a little bit of practice to uh, control your brush, brush this way, but with practice, um, you can do it. and. Just takes a bit of control. And here's where you could blend and make the sky look light and airy and give it a sense of light and depth. And just adding a bit of deeper blue on the horizon line. And now I could go back to the pyramid and add any last touches I wish to add, uh, particularly to the top of one of the pyramids. And using a bit more of an opaque color at this point. So you're starting off very thin and then adding heavier paint at the end. And here we have our finished painting of the Sphinx and the pyramids. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video from Bassman Studio. Remember, um, if you um, wish to comment or uh, have any questions regarding this video or any other videos I've done in the past, or have any art-related questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, also, for those who have subscribed, I thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so as to see more videos coming from Bassman Studio very soon. Um, Again, I encourage you to um, try today's lesson on your own. Um, try new things, of course, as, as in the art world, trying new things and actually in, in everything, trying new things makes you grow. So I encourage you to try something new and challenging. So remember, don't let fear stop you from creating great artwork. Go out there, be expressive, and I'll see you next time at Bassman Studio. Have an amazing day, everyone.